Well, good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the Senior Strategist for WealthPress. Today is Thursday. It's January 13th. It is the almost the end of the second trading week of January of 2022. It's about 8.03 in the morning right now. The market's not going to open up for another hour and 27 minutes or so. The market is a little higher, but mostly random. As you guys know, anything below 75, 85, 90 even on the Dow is not really anything beyond random. So the mar And the good thing about it is the market is actually in tune. Everything is up today just a little bit, which is better than the opposite. And I, I don't like to see the market open where the Dow is up 50 points, the Nasdaq's down 50 points. I don't like that. Here we have at least some degree of symmetry to start the day off. And when markets aren't too up or too down in the morning, it's easier to gauge in um, morning price action, especially when the market's open or otherwise volatility just goes nuts. So anyhow, markets are stable. Today's gonna be an interesting day because we're going to have the PPI. Yesterday we had the CPI. Actually, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. It was, uh, it was yesterday we had the CPI. The number was okay, it wasn't a great number, it wasn't an amazing number, but inflation, it's telling us that on a consumer level, infra inflation is almost at a 40 year high or a four decade high. Today we have the PPI where on a month to month basis, we're looking at a 0.4% higher number and a month to month base, a year to year basis, we're looking at almost 10%. Again, if the number is not higher than this, then it's probably good news because this is inflationary pressure. This is producer's price index. So we could see how the supply chain and the interest rate pressure from the or the bond buying from the Fed has caused interest rates to go up and cause inflationary pressure to producers prices. So yesterday we had a little idea of the consumer price level. Today we have the producers price index. Uh, the Fed is going to be speaking again today. The language is going to be very important, but we also had the Powell signal balance sheet reduction. So I don't think unless there's something really juicy, I don't think today's report from the Fed is going to be anything major. Um, the jobless claim number, I'm not really even focused on it. I'll show you what I'm, I'm talking about. The, the jobless claims has been about two, 200 moving average on the average 200,000. It's been roughly at this level for a long, long time. It's been going steadily down. If the number stays, even goes a little higher, it'll be okay. The PPI is the big number we look for. And then tomorrow, oh boy, tomorrow we got retail sales. We've got import, export, industrial production, which is going to be huge and consumer sentiment, which should actually go before retail sales, but nobody ever listens to me. So what am I going to do about that? I'm not going to change the Fed, but retail sales and consumer sentiment give us a very, very similar type of an outlook. Remember, retail sales makes up two thirds of the economy. And I find this report really interesting and could be very instrumental ahead of earnings season, which is starting this week with bank stocks. Let's talk a little bit about world economy and kind of review what we just discussed and go from there and look at some technical levels. Shares were mostly lower in Asia. Surging prices in the U.S. appear to keep the Federal Reserve on track to keep rates uh, rising in the coming months. We'll see. We'll see if they if if we'll see if the language changes or whatnot. Surging COVID cases have been raising uncertainty about the pace of recovery from the pandemic, and I'm also thinking the Fed can use that if they want to back things up or push back their aggressive, all of a sudden aggressive nature. For two years, it's nothing. Now they're going to be extra aggressive. Don't don't get me started. Britain, Germany have endured severe waves of highly contagious Omicron variant. France is at the epicenter of Europe's current fight against COVID. Infections topping 360,000 a day. And this is, this is Europe. This isn't, this isn't America. They're, they're not that big. Um, and again, people are not dying from this Omicron, but the hospitals and the system is getting taxed. So that's a big deal. But the good news is people are not dying like they did from the Delta variant. In Asia, the Omicron variant has swept across Australia. It's gained ground in other countries despite high vaccination rates, mask requirements, and strict border policies. But what are nations doing? They're increasing their mask mandates, knowing that it's not, do ah, don't even get me started. Japan reported more than 13,000 new infections on Wednesday, the highest in four months. China, whose zero COVID policies are being challenged by outbreaks just weeks ahead of the Winter games, that's gonna be a mess. Testing some case locking down entire cities. That's not good. That's not good. And, and imagine the stock market's near all time highs. Investors were focused on a report from the labor, labor department. This is the CPI we're talking about, which showed consumer prices jumped 7% last month. 
the fastest gain in almost four decades. The sharp increase, which was in line with the forecast, came a day after Jerome. Jerome, I'm not going to predict the future. Oh, wait, I am. Told Congress that the central banks stand ready to raise rates to fight inflation. Wall Street will get another uh, update on rising inflation today, where today we'll get the wholesale prices on the producer's level prices to see how how high inflation has been over the last four decades. And again, just to show you the number, what we're looking for on a month to month increase, let's just see how crazy the increase number is. Let's see here. Um, takes a little while to load, but eventually it does. Uh, we're looking for 0.4% on a, on a month and almost 10% on a year. If the number is higher than 9.8%, it may tell us that the number is even higher than the analysts are expecting, and it may cause the Fed to push back. Uh, if the number is weaker than expected, it's a surprise, and that's going to impact the Fed. So this number is really instrumental to what the Fed may be thinking over the near term. And again, tomorrow's retail sales and the fact that we have earnings uh, on earnings coming out this week is also going to impact the market. The big reports tomorrow, retail sales, industrial production that is going to impact the market substantially. Looking at the put to call ratio, now we're looking at market internals. It looks like we're kind of in the middle. We went all the way to 73, which is not really all that crazy. I mean, we've gone all the way down to 66 and 60, and, you know, 66, uh, 65, 67. Now we went, the lows were 73, 76, 76. So uh, this isn't really an overbought or oversold market. Typically when markets go above one, that means the markets are getting ready to go higher. When they go down here, they're ready to go lower, but we're kind of like drifting right now. We're not here nor there. So this indicator is not very valid right now. Looking at volatility, volatility levels are non-existent so the market is humming along looking at the dow jones we are now if we if we close above this blue line today and i think we will unless there's something really big we will officially be bullish again looking at the spy we are also if we stay above this line here we are bullish once again the qqq is the troublemaker because that has the biggest correlation to higher rates so we are looking very carefully to see if this is going to go up or if this is going to break down and come down to the base. Um, I know that some some traders and investors think this is going to be a failed rally. I actually think the market's going to go higher because there's going to be a lot of price discovery and I think earnings are going to show us some surprises. Looking at each individual sector, we still have energy, financial, consumer staples leading on a cumulative basis. I would stay defensive right now. I wouldn't be looking too much into consumer discretionary. Um, there are exceptions to the rule, but be very, very, very cautious right now. Looking at the heat map, and I'll show you why you've got to be cautious. Look at it yesterday. Steel, oil, energy, oil, oil, top 100 stocks, which I think is interesting. Mining, auto foreign, metals, defensive. Look at five days, oil, 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 energy, defensive. Look at the weakest sectors, uh, consumer discretionary, uh, restaurants, real estate developers, which I think is kind of odd. But um, anyhow, the bottom line is defensive, defensive. Let's look at each individual sector so we can get a good gauge of what's going on technically looking at the charts. Communication sector looks looks like it's just not doing anything. Industrial stocks look like they're they're trying to break out from this top. And if they do, they'll break out another level like they did right here. Um, utilities appear to be ready to go up another level right now. They look like they've bottomed out quite a bit. Healthcare stocks look like they're gearing up to go up on another level up. I like utilities and healthcare right now. Um, real estate, I'm not so sure. I think earnings and interest rates are going to impact real estate. I have a big question mark on interest rate on real estate right now. But overall, I'm still fairly bullish on it. Consumer discretionary, I think, is going to come up to two, 210, but I'm not so sure what will happen afterwards. So I think we're going to remain choppy, but a little bullish over the next few days. Basic materials, I like a lot right here, a lot. Um, uh, technology, eh, not so much. Energy looks like it's very, very strong, but it looks like it could be topping out. Financials are just looking amazing well, and I think consumer staples are on their way up. The major uncertainty I have right now is with real estate and communication. Those are the iffy 
iffy sectors for the time being. Now, today's Thursday. What do I usually do Thursday? I tell you what the strongest ETF is, top ETF. Top ETF right now is USO, US Oil Fund. Look at this baby. I mean, look at this nice ascending triangle. It's a nice little breakout right here, right? So will it go higher? I don't know. It's it's a little overextended in the short term. RSI is a little overbought. I would wait for it to cool off, maybe come down to its base, and then start looking into buying it. If you're looking at options, I would go out to April, 91 days, which is a good amount of time, and I would look closely to the 60 strike price, maybe the 59 strike price. They're both pretty cheap. Depends how close you want to be in the money. 59 or 60 strike price for the January, February, March, April expiration, 91 days to go. USO is the target. Now, folks, folks, today is Thursday, and we've got something very, very big. And uh, it's a phenomena that's been sweeping across the market, and it must be seen to be believed. Those who know this new trading trick have been able to lock in lightning fast returns like 62.07% on Philip Morris. 46.99% on X, heck, even 139.5% on RCL, all within just a few hours of market exposure. Click on the link below to hear more about the next trade signal coming this Friday afternoon. And as always, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're watching on YouTube, stay ahead of this crazy market, be the first to be notified when I post my next video. And tomorrow, we got weekly recap, biggest winners, biggest losers, and what to expect next week week follow the link don't delay check out you got to see this trick it must be seen to be believed and as always if you guys are getting value out of these videos if you're watching them send me an email support at marketgeeks.com bye guys take care and have a great great day